All right, greetings, math people. Today we're going to continue our calculus summer prep, and today we're going to look at uh, some algebra. So you probably may have heard that most of the mistakes calculus students make in calculus are based on algebra. So algebra is very critical, critical and integral to calculus success. Now trigonometry is also very important and other things you learn in pre-calculus are also important, uh, but algebra is, is pivotal in, in this particular deal. And there's various aspects of algebra that are crucial to calculus success. Uh, today, we're really going to look at two particular aspects. We're going to look at the algebra involved in something called uh, implicit differentiation without even getting into implicit differentiation. We're just going to look at the algebra aspect of it. And we're also going to look at the uh, the algebra involved uh, in the numerator of the quotient rule. Again, without actually getting into the calculus, actually going over the quotient rule, just kind of looking at uh, the algebra involved. So first, uh, let me start with... Um, uh, the algebra involved in implicit differentiation. Now, again, these particular videos are for students who have yet to take calculus and are trying to prepare uh, during the summer to be to have the best performance they can when they take calculus in the fall or spring. So therefore, I'm not looking at uh, calculus per se. So I'm going over the 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 algebraic uh, procedures of implicit differentiation without actually going over implicit differentiation. And there's one topic uh, that you learn in algebra that really aligns well uh, to what you have to do to implicit differentiation, and that's finding the inverse of a function. Certain functions do very well. And so what I'm going to do is just go over finding uh, the inverse of a function and the algebra we use here, and we'll we'll look at a couple of shortcuts in, in this maneuvering, it will be very beneficial to when you get to implicit differentiation uh, in calculus. So just remember that. All right, so uh, let me write a function. Okay, so let's say I have some function f of x and I'm gonna make it a rational function uh, with the linear denominators and, and numerators. So say 3x minus two over x plus six. And we're gonna find the inverse of this particular function. So of course, to find the inverse, as they taught you in your algebra class, you replace the x's with y's and turn f of x to x and then solve for y. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So f of x is gonna become x and every x is gonna become a y. All right, and so we want to solve for y. There's various methods we can use to solve for y. Uh, a very common method is to, just to get rid of our denominator. So that's to multiply both sides of the equation by y minus two. All right, so when I multiply the left by y minus two, I'll get x y minus two x. I'll write that x y minus 2x. And when I multiply the right by y minus 2, uh, the denominators just cancel and I'm just left with 3y minus 2. Now my goal, my, my, my objective here is to solve for y. So what I like to do is get all the y's to one side of the equation. So every term that has a y in it, I want it on one side. And every term that does not have a y, I want it on the opposite side. So what I'll do is I'll move this 3y over and move this 2x over. So what I'll have is xy minus 3y, and that'll equal 2x plus 2. And now again, my objective is to solve for y. So what I'll do is I'll factor out the y, and that'll leave me with y times x minus 3, and that'll equal 2x plus two, and then I'll divide by this to get the y by itself. So I'll divide both sides by x minus three. And this actually is the answer. So this is the inverse of the function f of x. 
Now the math we did uh, precisely starting here is something that we do in implicit differentiation. Now what you typically are solving for in implicit differentiation is not y, but it's uh, like a y prime, so a y with a little prime mark, or dy by dx, it doesn't matter. It can be any letter in the alphabet, but the procedure is particularly the same. So what we do is, you know, whatever variable we're solving for, uh, we get everything with that to one side, and then we factor it out and then divide. Now, a shortcut I want to point out, again, looking at this stage is, this is what I know. I know I'm going to move the terms that have the Y to one side. And so I'm going to figure out what side I want them to be on. So let's say I'll, I want them to be on the left like I did in this case. So I know everything that has a Y that's on the right, like this 3Y, I know the sign is going to change. So notice it became negative 3Y. And every term that doesn't have a Y that's on the left, I know its sign is going to change because I'm going to move it. So that's why this negative 2X. Uh, became positive 2x. And then I know I'm going to factor out the y as we did here and divide by what's left. So I'm always going to divide by the stuff that was being multiplied by the y. So therefore, really what you can do from, again, from this, this point on, if you think about where you're moving the y's and moving the other stuff, and you know that the stuff times the y is going to be a part of your denominator, you can just change the sign. For instance, the, I know this X is going to stay the same. I know this three is going to become negative and I know that's going to be my denominator. So my denominator is going to be X minus three. And then for the stuff that doesn't have Y's, I know I'm going to change the sign of this because it's on the wrong side and this is going to keep the same sign. So I'm going to have two X. Was that a minus sign? That's just two X. This is a minus two. So I made a little mistake here. This should be I uh, apologize. That should be a minus two and that should be a minus two. Apologies. So I know this two X is going to become positive and this minus two is going to stay uh, minus two. All right, let's look at another example. So again, for this to be relevant to implicit differentiation, uh, these rational function uh, inverses are, are the best to use. So let's say it's 5x plus 3 over 7x plus 2. All right. So we're going to go through the process. So this becomes x. And this will become 5y plus 3 over 7y plus 2. And then I'll multiply everything by 7y plus 2. And that'll give me 7xy plus 2x. And that'll simply equal 5y plus 3. All right, so now this is the point where I'm ready to write my answer with, with a little thinking involved, understanding how the problem behaves. So I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to call this, this answer uh, the inverse of f of x. All right, so I want to put everything that has a Y on the left, okay? So that means this is going to change signs and that's going to change signs because I want everything that doesn't have a Y to be on the right. So those two th guys have to move. So their signs are going to change. Again, the stuff that's being multiplied by Y, that's going to make up my denominator. So my denominator is going to be 7X minus 5. Again, the, the sign right here changes. So we're factoring out the Y. So that's why we're just left with the five and the seven X. Now the stuff that does not have Y in it, that's going to be my numerator. And again, the sign of this guy is going to change. And so that's going to be negative two X plus three. Uh, that's the answer. That's the inverse. Uh, let's look at another one. And again, we're not trying uh, to make this calculus, we, we want, we, we're just going over the algebra and calculus, but I'm going to make it a little more familiar to how it's going to look in calculus. And so in this term, in this time, I'm going to turn the Y term into Y prime. Okay. Let's delete. So let's say 
f of x is negative 2x plus 10 over 5x minus 1. Okay, so you're familiar with the process, so we can go do it fa fairly quickly here. So let's see uh, uh, what we have. Uh, we'll have um, x equals, again, I'm going to turn these x's into y prime. So just y with a little prime mark like that. So just a different notation. Nothing really changes. 5y prime minus 1. All right, and so from this point, you know I'm going to multiply uh, both sides by 5y prime minus 1. And so what, what that's going to leave me with is a 5xy prime minus x. And that, of course, is going to equal negative 2y prime plus 10. And so now I'm ready to write my answer. And so in this case, it's y prime I'm solving for. All right, so again, this is going to have to move and this is going to have to move. So those signs are going to change. And again, everything that's being multiplied by y prime is going to make up my denominator. So my denominator is going to be 5x plus 2. Remember the sign change right here. And my numerator is going to be x plus 10. Again, remember the sign change right there. All right. So um, that's how we find inverse of functions. Again, the math utilized here will be particularly useful uh, when doing implicit differentiation uh, in your calculus class. Uh, we're going to look at one uh, last um, algebra thing here. So let me clear the screen. And what we're going to look at now is the algebra involved to find something called the quotient rule. Now, again, I'm not going to go over the quotient rule, but there's, there's really uh, in the numerator of the quotient rule, there's the product of two functions and they're being subtracted. And it's really that subtraction that causes the problem. So let me just write a, a couple things here. So this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have uh, an expression um, I'm just going to do a formula where I have a of x times b of x minus c of x times d of x. And for my first example, um, uh, let's say a of x is 3x squared plus 2 let's say b of x is 4x let's say c of x is 6x and let's say d of x is 2x squared plus 3. all right so we'll just consider those the functions a of x b of x c of x and d of x and we're going to do a times b minus c times uh, d all right so uh, let's write it again. This is actually what we're doing. And I know this seems simple enough, but that minus sign in the middle uh, causes a lot of problems. And that's really all we're, we're concerned with. Uh, the multiplication is generally not the problem. It's applying that minus sign. So we're going to try to emphasize that point. So let me write what we got. So we got a of x. So we have 3x squared plus 2 times 4x minus 6x times 2x squared plus 3. And I'm going to overemphasize something that I, uh, that, I, that I really need to overemphasize. So I'm going to put this in this whole second deal in parentheses like that. The, the problem that normally occurs is a lot of times when when people uh, do this this type of process and, and again this is this is where all the problems occur this minus sign the biggest mistake is to apply the minus sign only to the first term now the way this one is formatted it doesn't look like that's something that's going to happen uh, because the first term was a monomial being multiplied by by a binomial so that wouldn't it's not a, a prime example where that would happen 
But that's why I put this in parentheses. I still want to emphasize the fact that this minus sign is being applied to everything to the right of it. Everything to the right of the minus sign is getting the minus sign applied to it. That's the main thing you want to remember because the big mistake is they only apply it to like the first term. So the stuff on the left is not that, that big of a concern to us. So we're just going to distribute it on the left and we'll get 12 X cubed plus eight X. So now on the right, I don't want to distribute the minus sign just yet. So I want to keep the minus sign there first. And I first want to simplify all this before I begin applying the minus sign. And of course, applying the minus sign is just changing the sign of every term after it. But I like to simplify first. Again, uh, these are techniques that minimize mistakes. All right, so I will get 12 X cubed, 12 X cubed plus, again, I'm not dealing with the minus sign yet, plus 18 X. Now I want to go ahead and distribute the minus sign. So here I'm just writing what's on the left, 12 X cubed plus eight X minus 12 X cubed minus 18 X. And then from there we'll combine like terms. You'll see those will cancel and you'll have eight X minus 18 X giving you negative 10 X. All right, let's look at another example. And again, just to remind you of our formula, our formula we're using here is just a, b minus c, d. And we'll create new functions for a, b, and c. So here, let's go 3x minus 11, b, let's make b, x cubed. C, let's make C uh, 2x squared plus 4. And let's make D be 7x. All right, so we got A times B minus C times D. So that's going to be uh, 3x minus 11 times x cubed minus in parentheses, 2x squared plus 4 times 7x. So again, what's on the the left of the minus sign is, is, is trivial. So this will be uh, 3x to the fourth minus 11x cubed. Now, again, I'm very cautious what happens uh, to the right of the minus sign. So I'm not going to apply the minus sign yet. I'm going to simplify the stuff to the right of the minus sign first. So I'm going to distribute this 7x and I'll get 14 x cubed plus, again, I'm not dealing with the minus sign yet, plus 28x. Now I'll distribute the minus sign. So let me just bring this down. Uh, 3x to the fourth minus 11x cubed and that will be minus 14x cubed minus 28x. And then I'll combine my like terms, uh, which are just these two. So we'll have uh, 3x to the fourth, part in my three, minus 25x cubed minus 28x. All right, so we'll go ahead and stop there. Um, we looked at two uh, algebraic scenarios uh, that are uh, that are useful to be proficient at, to be successful in calculus, particularly doing something called implicit differentiation and something called the quotient rule. If you just practice problems like this, when you encounter these particular topics in calculus, uh, they should go a lot smoother with this type of practice. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.